Hello you guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm so happy you're here. If you're new here, please do me a favor. Hit the like, subscribe button, hit that bell so you know whenever I post a video. Support this channel by considering a donation. You can hit the super chat below, super thanks. Or you can also join us on Patreon, patreon.com slash it's the real Najwa. You can also join as a member here on YouTube. Lots of exciting things happening there. And we get to talk about the stuff that's not so PC over there so definitely join as a member i would love to see you all there and if you just want some free stuff still just go ahead and smash that like smash the bell you know whenever i post a video so let's get into it um you guys pretty much know at this point where i stand on donald trump and i was thinking very recently you know the vibes of donald trump really puts me in the headspace of a john Gotti. <laughs> It really puts me in the headspace of a John Gotti. And then lo and behold, I saw a special on MSNBC comparing Trump with John Gotti. And it wasn't even just John Gotti. Donald Trump has long since given me this vibe of that character, that, that bootlegger character, the, the snake oils salesman who, you know, really, really kind of stokes fear but also um a sort of false confidence in a community and this community gathers around them to protect them even when they are deeply in the wrong like john Gotti, but also for example like al capone you know and those people were not presidents of the united states of america those people were gang leaders mobsters and ironically i saw this special on msnbc and it was comparing Trump to John Gotti. And um, not necessarily in the same profession, you know, they don't have the same profession, but sort of just that figure, you know, that community figure of a problematic leader. And it got me to thinking about John Gotti. And then lo and behold, in my Netflix queue pops up <coughs> a, a, a little mini series titled get gaudy and i'm sorry i'm kind of like i'm getting over a cold um and so i check it out and it's it's just it's invigorating my mind it's invigorating my mind and sort of stimulating me i saw that movie bonnie and clyde you know and just that idea of that bootlegger who is you know um in the real estate tycoon business or hawking off you know <clears throat> counterfeit jewelry or you know sh shuttling you know back in the olden days shuttling illegal whiskey from speakeasy to speakeasy you know it just rico really embodies that and i feel like when georgia used the rico case the rico um court filing to go after donald trump and his cronies the same court filing that rudy giuliani used to attack so many of these criminals that made him so famous um it was quite ironic and guys I mean, before we even get into the review, it is amazing. It's wonderful. Get Gotti um, is actually one of the, I think, one of the most tailored pieces that I've seen done on Netflix. And it's only three episodes long. And maybe it's just because this sort of goodwill effort of FBI agents and, you know, the DOJ and the court systems and uh, a very, very committed jewelry and brave sort of witnesses who who have the bravery to speak out when they know that political violence can be um, enacted against them to see these parallels between these two very different but also in strange ways very similar figures was absolutely invigorating and I have to say I don't think that that was a coincidence you know I definitely think that this is the time where we're creating Chaucer's Canterbury Tales. You know, this is a new wave of that, of where <laughs> these these MAGA Republicans will really go after you to the extent so much that it, it becomes difficult, you know, for good intentioned people to just say, hey, this is illegal, this is wrong, because it's that mob type mentality that MAGA has adopted protect Donald Trump at all costs you know 
social media is such a toxic place i really really encourage you all to just get off just get off you know get off for at least some sort of sabbatical or hiatus especially i'm going to do a whole other video about this but especially grandma and granddad who have suddenly turned very sort of hitler-esque <laughs> get them off of social media because it's actually causing a lot of our problems it is a narcissist is narcissist it's a narcissist's breeding ground i'm gonna do a video about that right after this so um or maybe tomorrow i don't know but literally like just this idea of social media has become a narcissist in and of itself netflix has sort of taken this um subtle approach to speaking out against the powers that be against these corrupt politicians that are protecting this millionaire and billionaire class like donald trump um and i think that they're telling it through history and i think that the reason that we're seeing so many of these different historical almost very dark um series and documentaries docu-series on netflix like the one about jeffrey dahmer uh like this one about get gaudy you know i think part of it is to show how history repeats itself you know how it's so important to observe how leadership has bled over into corruption and get gaudy i mean he literally just he, he is a 1980s version of Donald Trump. By the way, the soundtrack is absolutely amazing. The visual effects on the show is amazing. And I get the, I get the sense that Netflix doesn't put money behind licensed music, you know, and licensed footage, really, unless it's, like, really, really important. So the fact that they did that with this one, I think it really speaks to, to it, you know. Otherwise, I feel like they, they often use kind of generic-type music. They use generic-type footage which i'm like dude netflix please just do more quality than quantity and bring some of our favorite shows back instead of like flipping out stuff every two seconds but still they also do put out these kind of golden gems every once in a while like my husband and i are watching one piece and that's really awesome on there too anyway get Gotti basically chronicles how the doj is going after Gotti with this rico charge and they were doing everything that they can, being as creative as possible to get the, the evidence on this man that they need because so many people are intimidated into silence by him. He definitely unalived at least five people, um, you know, and maybe Donald Trump hasn't unalived someone with his bare hands. We don't know that. Gotti did we don't know that that Teflon Don did but he certainly kind of had people to do it and Donald Trump even though it's not the same thing he has that mob boss exterior people if you don't vote blue in 2024 we're absolutely screwed over um I found this article it talks about seven things that are revealed through Netflix's Get Gotti and I wanted to kind of talk with you through it because for a new generation, I think these mob stories, you know, I, I definitely saw Goodfellas a long time ago. It's one of those movies like The Godfather that my brothers loved and my dad loves. But at the same time, my brothers and my dad, they're people who are very, very honor driven. They're very, very much rooted into their um belief systems but you see a lot of young men out there who are actually taking this this mob boss mentality that they see on tv that they see in video games great it's entertainment you know that doesn't mean that you need to carry it over into your own life but we see from the guy that lives in his mom's basement translating that type of stuff he's looking at on tv and in his video games into trolling on social media all the way up to people like you know the 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 indicted former president who is adopting similar mob boss type tactics so i feel like this really really points to how you know even up to the biggest level th that politician that public figure who maybe is engaging in some really really crazy stuff i mean crazy stuff like unaliving people like having other people unalive people um 
like intimidation and um, you know, like when we get to this point, we're coming back to, we're regressing. Uh, you know, and I think that the show really highlights how, it highlights something that is highlighted in, um, it's, it's not the Netflix documentary about uh, Jeffrey Dahmer, but it's another documentary about Jeffrey Dahmer where it really paints the picture um, that it was easy for him to get away with a lot of this stuff in the 80s because New York City in the 80s was, I mean, New York City in the 80s was everybody was trying to capitalize off of crime. They knew that they could do it. They could get away with it. And look at look at New York City now. I feel like, honestly, in the early 2000s and then the early 2010s, especially after 9-11, New York City suddenly became something that wasn't recognizable to the what we saw in the 80s, what we saw in the movies in the 80s, for those of us who were quite young at that time. It was clean. It was safe, you know. But then we had this crazy orange elephant to come into the picture and stochastic terrorism, xenophobia, hate speech, Islamophobia, transphobia, uh, not wanting women to have autonomy over their own bodies, that all became normalized. And what do you know? Crime shot up. Hate crimes shot up. Domestic terrorism shot up. And so um, I think it took a while for sort of the, the and I'm going to get to the points in a second, but I, I kind of have to put this together for you. It took a while, I feel like, for the Justice Department and sort of the New York um, decision makers about the infrastructure of New York, about the, the safety and the protection of New York, the security of New York, I feel like it took the, those entities, that combined entity of those sort of um, protective, economic, financial security forces, I, it took a while for them to figure out that John Gotti, this one single man, you know, and all of his cronies were really, really destabilizing New York. You know, and his little operation out of Queens was truly destabilizing New York. And New York is one of America's biggest economies. So if you're just destabilizing New York, New York City, you're destabilizing, you know, the profitability, the well-being, you know, sort of the precedent set across the whole country in a way. And so... um I feel like a light bulb went off at some point with the FBI, with the DOJ, uh, with stock market, with the real estate, um, with the real estate sector. I feel like a light bulb went off at some point to say, we've got to get this guy out of here. You know, he's going to ruin New York and ruin America if we don't take care of this really soon. I feel like the same sentiment came over people's minds eventually with Al Capone. Same thing. I feel like right now, even though the justice system, I'm going to make another video about this, is, I mean, it's delaying this too much. It's delaying this so, so much to bring Donald Trump into, um, to bring him into, um, to bring him into, to, 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 to justice, to bring him under justice. Um, but I think that, again, those entities that be, the Justice Department, um, you know, like the financial system, our partnerships, our global partnerships, um, diplomacy, the executive branch, the legislative branch outside of the most extreme devoted followers, um, the, the, the judicial branch outside of, you know, those elected officials that are no good deed doers. I feel like they also are waking up to what everyday average Americans figured out pretty much a long time ago, at least the normies, that this man has the potential to just bring it all down, just like these Gotti figures, just like the Al Capone figures. And I don't want to do that to inflate Donald Trump's ego any more than it already is, because I imagine he already has a very inflated ego. But we have to be brave enough to say that this is enough. That is how people like John Gotti and Al Capone and Sarkozy were able to get out, you know? Like, for example, I'm American, but I live in France. Sarkozy, I mean, it doesn't just happen in America. This happens all the time. If crime 
and corruption is not addressed you know and it's not put into its place especially fascism when you're pulling people into this fascist system because you're essentially threatening them and, and in some cases threatening them with a smile it doesn't end well and when i looked at that video from roseanne saying that Biden is still president and she doesn't think the election is going to happen next year because she thinks something else is going to happen. I'm like, what's the something else, Roseanne? Do you think that you and your, your crazy cronies who are always preaching about God, and trust me, God has the last word. You do bad, especially to an entire country of people who are innocent, who aren't buying into your rabbit hole thing. The fact that you're going to drag us down into your shared delusion and have America just turn over on its side, combust into flames because of this one guy, because you can't admit that you're in the wrong, you, that is going to be judged by no one but God alone. So you can sit here and spout off about Satan all that you want, but in the end, you are going to have to be the one to make it right with God. No, none, I can sit here and judge you all day, but I am not God. There's going to be one singular God that will judge you. And to go, if you go and look at that, that, that short on TikTok about Roseanne talking about it, under it, and there's a majority of older women, older white women who are commenting, which I think says a lot to this, Oh, Roseanne, we love you. She's so awake. She's so, look at how belligerent the man is and not believing that Joe Biden is somehow, uh, you know, responsible for all the problems in the U.S., but at the same time, he's not actually the president. Donald Trump is still actually the president. You know, like, look at his disbelief. He's so naive. Oh, I see that you've bought into this leftist, woke um, fairy tale, whatever it is. I mean, this right here reads to me as these people that you see on this Netflix series at Gotti's, you know, funeral. And I don't want to speak death on anyone. I pray to God that this doesn't end this way. But when you have leaders like this, corrupt leaders like this, and you have such a cult following where people cannot see where you've done harm, and he's done harm. I mean, look at people who have died in ice camps. Look at the COVID numbers. Look at the border numbers. Look at the people who have died or been injured crossing the border. Look at the amount of young women and girls who have suffered from the abortion strategy, the abortion tactics, the draconian abortion tactics. Look at all the people who have passed away in mass shootings t targeted towards black people and Jewish people and Muslim people. I mean, there's a lot of bodies stacking up at this point. And sure, Donald Trump can say that he didn't actually do it, you know. But we cannot continue with this. He, he can say that he didn't actually do it. But, you know, these people who were defending him, they remind me so much of these people on this documentary that reporters go and talk to and they say, hey, why do you love John Gotti so much? And they just say, Oh, because he was amazing. He didn't take no stuff from no one. And he always dressed so nice. And um, he's just a good family. Just good people. Oh, well, you know that he was responsible for, you know, this and this and that. Unaliving this person. Intimidating these people. You know, uh, these, these racketeering rings. This fraud. Oh, yeah, but that's not who we, no, that's not who he was. He was such a good guy. So, I mean, I think that, you know, it's time for us to wake up. But listen to this article. Listen, I mean, if you don't believe me, let's just listen to... The article. So, this is from Screen Rant. I love this, this channel, this website it says the biggest reveals in netflix is john gotti crime okay and this is by holly McFar mcfarlane wow like seth mcfarlane holly mcfarlane uh it says it was published five days ago so it says netflix has got gotti oh netflix's get gotti provides insight into john gotti's crime family 
but there are also some big bombshells revealed in the documentary series. The Netflix documentary Get Gotti reveals new insight into the seedy world of organized crime and John Gotti's rise to power, thanks to first-hand accounts from key figures. Okay, yes, there's lots of accounts from key figures and it's actually really, really well made. And I was so proud that people would come out and admit that they had made mistakes, that supporting this lifestyle was a mistake. They had enough scruples to say this man was wrong. And everybody in MAGA is capable of that. You know, I know that there's something deep down in the backbone of them that probably says, you know what, this is wrong. Unless they're, unless they're just psychopaths. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I don't mean that in a bad way, but psychopaths, you have no control over them. But as far as the people who actually do believe in God, the people who actually do want to do good, I think that they're misguided, but I think that they're afraid. You know, I, I really truly do. I think that they're afraid to admit that this is not a good person. Um, it says the FBI and the OCTF were aware of Gotti's involvement in unalivings, uh, but couldn't prove it due to lack of evidence and threats faced by informants. Now think of how many times on so-called Truth Social where people who try to come after that person are constantly shut down, are constantly, it's, it's I mean, looking at how Gotti's attorneys, for example, worked overtime to try and shut down, you know, the jury. I think of this point in the series where they talk about one of Gotti's lawyers says, you know, if you take a rancid soup, no matter how long you cook it, it's still going to be rancid, it's still going to be poisonous, it's still going to be uh, rotten, you know, this rotten soup. I think that was a word that he used, rotten soup. And, um, I see, though, I see those parallels, you know, make attorneys get attorneys. Just be as aggressive as possible. Just deny, deny, lie, 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 deny, 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 and act like nothing happened. John Gotti walked up into these court, these court hearings in the most beautiful suits, extremely confident. Not once, you know, bead of sweat coming down his forehead, looking so chill and calm. You know, when they listen to these wiretappings of John Gotti, you know, there is just him going on and on and on and on. They know something is wrong when they don't hear his voice because he never stops talking. The hallmarks of narcissism. You know, it's like the, the FBI and the DOJ, they worked hard. They worked overtime to get this man. And, and it's like, you got to give them their props. They were creative, honey. It says the FBI and the OCTF were aware of Gotti's involvement in unalivings, but couldn't prove it due to the lack of evidence and threats faced by informants. And lastly, it says in these bullet points, Gotti broke mob rules by orchestrating the unaliving of Paul Castellano, which was a big one in Gotti's case, violating the mafia's protocol, which showed his boldness and disregard for tradition. And towards the very end, many of his confidants also think that this is going to be his downfall, how um, inclined he is towards the media attention and the camera. It's like, no, that's not what my bosses do. You're going to have to tone that down, buddy. So it says the Netflix documentary, Get Gotti Reveals, several fascinating facts about the seedy world of organized crime and Gotti in particular. So seven is the FBI and OCTF knew John Gotti was involved in Paul Castellano's unaliving early, but couldn't prove it. Number six, John Gotti reached celebrity status as the Dapper Don because of the way that he dressed. Again, he, this is someone who actually was uh, enjoying the attention he was getting as a quote-unquote mob boss around town. The reputation of being a mob boss. He was excited about that and the mob is supposed to be like, dude, they're supposed to be understated. So that, that just doesn't work. He was like excited about being covered on news of getting away with crime, you know, thinking that he would never ever face retribution. He would never face justice. Um, it says number five, John Gotti broke mob rules with his crimes. Yes. So even, don't you find it absolutely fascinating that even in the mob there are rules. 
<laughs> and there were some rules that like you don't deal drugs for example in the mob um you don't uh you know commit unaliving of uh, adversary on on his property you know because you don't want his wife and his family to see that and i learned all of this stuff from the documentary of course i'm not like some mob expert um you don't be the big you know i am you know the the big i am you don't be the big i am you don't be that person who is you know really flaunting your wealth too much i mean not very publicly it needs to all be kind of secret not flaunting your crime i mean it's like you've got to keep the secret and he broke those rules um number four OCTF and the FBI were competing to take down John Gotti, you know, in that way, I also really find parallels between, you know, the, the guy and uh, the state prosecution and the federal prosecution. It's, it's very interesting. Um, but either way, I, you, I told you, like I said in the beginning, you can see that these various entities that work separately, but in the same way cohesively to make America, Americans democracy work. You can see that they're finally waking up to what a lot of us had been at a whole a long time ago of saying, um, this ain't gonna work. <laughs> Number three, the FBI had unique ways of getting Gotti to share info. It says the in Get Gotti, members of the FBI and the OCTF discussed their usage of bugs to gain evidence on John Gotti's crimes, but the FBI in particular had some tactics for doing so. In an attempt to get Gotti to talk about Paul Castellano, the FBI got the most America's Most Wanted to do an episode on Castellano's unaliving. While the unorthodox tactic was desperate, the plan worked, prompting figures like Gotti and Sammy Grifano to openly discuss Castellano and their hatred of him on the show. By employing such an out-of-the-box method, the FBI was able to obtain a clear motive for Castellano's unaliving and Gotti's own words this makes me sort of think of the guy who has been bragging about unaliving tupac or being in the 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 unaliving vehicle you know when tupac was unalived he's been bragging about this crap for 20 years 30 years actually at this point almost and finally you know the justice department was just like nah i mean i know he's old now but book him book him book him book him um Two, John Gotti had a history of rigging his criminal trials. Does it sound familiar? Doesn't need to say much else. And number one, the FBI and OCTF eventually joined forces to take uh, down John Gotti. So basically, after saying all of that, where I would leave it is that I took some solace in this because I hate seeing my country of birth combust into MAGA flames, <laughs> you know? I hate seeing my the, the greatest country on earth risk becoming Rome, you know, the fallen Rome, the fallen um, Roman Empire because of people who just, you know, are in a shared groupthink sort of delusion. I would hate, hate, hate to see that. And not only that, so many different players who just are too addicted to the power, too addicted to the money, too addicted to the lifestyle to sort of come closer to meeting people halfway to live with the average Americans. I mean, it's not like we're trying to ask, you know, all of these people the Supreme Court justices and senators and House representatives and, and billionaires and CEOs, MAGA, you know, woman-hating, uh, xenophobic, racist, sexist, you know, rich cronies, abortion-loving cronies to, you know, get in line at the freaking welfare building. It's like they will still be hyper-rich if they pay their taxes. If they stop trying to turn America into 1945 Germany, you know, well, 19, I, I'd say probably more like 1938 Germany. But, I mean, it's not like they would be in penury. They wouldn't, you know. It's not like they would be coming and meeting us all the way over here if they're over here. They'd be probably somewhere right here. Can, I mean, can you meet us? That's not even halfway, you know. It's like, that's like an inch. It's like 10% of the way. But... The, I, again, I guess the wealth, the power, the money is just too important, like it was for John Gotti. But in the end, justice, it might be a slow will to grind. It might be a slow halt 
but eventually it does stop and it stops on the person who has been organizing the crime. There is still time for Republicans to get out. There's still time for swing voters to get out. Please, please, please vote blue in 2024. And also watch this on Netflix. It was really, really good. I want to know what you guys think. Let me know in the comments.